getting up was very tiring and all that. Uh, yeah, yeah, but today is a good day. The sun is up, uh, it's a bright day. And uh, I can assure you that you're going to have a very good day today. All right. So, you know, um, greeting in the morning is Machi. Machi. Yes, and greeting in the afternoon is Maha. Maha. Yes, and greeting in the evening is Majo. Majo. Okay, and the same response. But depending here, yeah, when we want to respond, depending on the person who is greeting, you respond accordingly. But generally, you respond, yeah. If it is a, a, a father figure or a brother, you would say, yeah, Eja. Yeah, Eja. Eja means father. And Eja, in another way, can mean fire. <laughs> so your, your father is a very strong pillar in the home. And it can be fire. Uh -huh. And your mother, you say, ya enna. Ya enna. Yes. So a mother figure or stuff like that, you call ya enna. Yes. But generally, you would respond, ya. Ya. Yes. And um, I believe that you are going to have a very good take. Um, there will be a thing. I have to give you some quick tidbits um, whilst you're here. Um, something that I have observed over the years and something that will be very useful to you if you want to um, take it especially on a start with shopping since you will be doing a lot of shopping it is very very important here in Ghana in the open market we shop a lot and we do bargaining and um, you, may, you, yeah. you know <laughs> bargaining yeah. is a very big deal here so when you are yeah. buying stuff um, you are always um, when you at least for me, what I do is the price I divide into three, <laughs> and I can start with um, two thirds of it or one third of it till I come to the middle ground to half of it or a little bit um, above the half. And that's how uh, we do it here. So you want to put that into practice. Um, and back in here, you know, in home, back in your home, and uh, in the States, in Europe, where you go to the shops, they are named, they are um, figures or cost prices on them. So you don't. You pick it, go to the counter, check, and you go. You don't talk to anyone. But here, when you are buying in the shop, definitely you would make a friend. You would start a conversation because the bargaining can be sometimes very, very um, up and down, back and forth. So you would have to make some friends. And when you make a friend, I'll, I'll give it to you for your price. Take it for your price. Take it for your price. So you do that. And so when you are bargaining, you just don't keep on going up, 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 up. You try to talk, make conversation, and by the time you see that, uh, he's giving you for your price. So that's the tidbit for shopping and bargaining. So you do that. And also, um, I would advise that we would be visiting a lot of um, the craft villages and going to let the people make them themselves. And so you also want to spend and give back to them as well. And so when we get there, you have the opportunity to buy there so that you don't do all the shopping with the, those who come around and follow us around. And they'll follow us around a lot. <laughs> and so you should, you should have for one, you should be one about it so that you can invest in the economy as well, but spread it around for people who also need it and also benefit from it. All right? Okay. Um, other thing too is um, we are each other's keeper on the bus and during the store, we should be each other's keeper. So when we're going and moving and you see that someone is not on the bus, um, it will be good to um, get, let us know. Uh, me, Bumani, or the tour assistant here um, will be ready to assist and to look for where people are. Ghana is a very peaceful country. And um, one thing um, is that a lot of people, I spoke, yesterday I told you about a lot of people speak English. So you should be very sure. But then in places where they don't speak or the, the English is limited, that is why I'm here, I will be Co coordinating um, with the locals, especially when it comes to local languages where they, they can't understand the English very well. And so if you need my assistance, and I'll be there to assist you and help. Also, um, I'll be also giving you drive time as we go along. Um, and please, um, drive times are only given based on um, what, the distance we're going, and uh, not actually like in kilometers or, or miles. I'll give it to you according to the time we were expected to arrive there. Taking into account not stopping for washroom use or buying stuff, or probably there will be a uh, road traffic or a roadblock or the road condition is not too good. So, but then I will try as much as possible with the help of my driver here to let you know um, how many hours 
we are expected to arrive at a particular destination. All right? And also, when we arrive at a particular destination or any, whenever we are getting off the bus, Ghana has open drainage system. And so the drains are open. So when you are coming off the bus, uh, please watch your step. Um, the floor is uneven. So when you are walking, please watch your step so that you don't trip. But the, the driver would make sure that we park the bus at the place where it's very safe for you to get off safely. All right? Okay. And then if you look on your left, it's the University of Ghana. We will drive there um, while doing our city tour. Or when we're coming back and this time we'll drive into the campus for you to see the University of Ghana. Um, it's the first university built here in during the Gold Coast time. Today is Sunday. Yes. Church. And um, you would observe today there is less traffic. Today is a Sunday. And in Ghana, 69 to 70 percent are Christians. I see that. So everybody goes to church. And then we have about um, 15 to 18 percent Muslims, and then we have 8 to 10 percent, um, we call them traditional religion. Traditional religion. And so it's, it's still being practiced. Some places people still practice the traditional religion. What's the percentage of the tradition? 8 to 10 percent. Yes. It's going down. So yes. <laughs> it's going down. Yes. Because yes. everybody, everybody loves Jesus, right? <laughs> yes. So that's the thing. <laughs> and, and, and then there are other also religions as well, um, Buddhism, Hinduism, and all that are also coming up. In, 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 in. You know, Ghana is a very fast growing um, economy and also is growing um, the developing country, so there are a lot of things coming in. And also, um, one other thing too you should know um, tipping is also allowed uh, when you go to restaurants, the hotels, you want to tip the staff, you can do that. Um, mostly it's based on the level of service you get, but um, you could try what you do back at home, probably 10% of what you give. Um, CDs. Yeah, CDs. CDs. Okay, and it, it's, it will be very, very much appreciated um, supporting the, the economy and supporting people because um, the, one of the major, major economy of, of the country is agriculture. And let me let you know, in Accra, which is a cosmopolitan city and a metropolis in the capital, it's not all of Ghana. Some people come to Ghana and when they live in Accra, they think that's all of Ghana. But all the Ghana is actually outside Accra. And you see the people, you see the people themselves, that is what it is. The hustle and people going up and down. And every Ghanaian, you will know every Ghanaian is an entrepreneur. <laughs> Entrepreneur. Entrepreneur, yes. yes. They have their own small business. And so you will see that. And so um, Accra is about uh, 5 million in terms of population. The population of Ghana is actually going up to about 29 million. Uh, yes. And Ghana, the size of Ghana is about two, approximately 240,000 square miles. That's about 238,578 um, square miles. And it's the size, similar to the size of Oregon yeah. in the States. Uh, and uh, Accra is, um, Ghana is divided into 10 administrative regions. And so um, Accra is the capital of the greater Accra region. You understand? Yes. Okay, so the urban city is very dense in that the urban city alone is about um, 2.5 million people. It's, and Accra is the smallest of all the regions. Yes. And the population rate growth is about 2.7%. And um, Ghana is very, very, uh, we used to be under what was called the HIPIC highly indebted poor country um, back in 2000, but we moved out of HIPIC and we classified as a, a developing country and all that. Yes. And so um, Ghana is very blessed. Yes. Ghana is one of the peaceful countries in the world. And in terms of Africa, the number one in Africa. <laughs> <That's what's up. laughs> and when it comes to democracy, we've been practicing democracy a very, very long time, over 25 years of stable democracy. 
and you know like that. Democrat, it sounds like you said Democrat. It sounds like you said Democrat. Democracy. Democracy. Yeah. And also, um, the in Ghana, what we have is a. Um, just like back in the States, we have two terms where the president um, can be elected for the second term, um, four year each term. Um, the next election year will be 2020. And so um, it will be very, very busy. And just today, from yesterday, one of the very biggest opposition party is in Congress trying to elect their executives and their new um, candidates. Yes. and. Um, one other thing too you should know is um, the, what we, the regions will be seeing when we are here on this tour will be seeing Greater Accra region, we are going to the eastern region and uh, you see part of the eastern region, the eastern region is big as well then you will see also the Asante region and you will see the central region these are the regions we will be going um, and all these regions have capitals, I said earlier on and they are administrative centers where the government runs its businesses to coordinate all of that and so um, it was a very, very big, um, big but small country. <laughs> yes. Um, also, you will notice around there are minivans and trotro, we call them trotro, T-R-O-T-R-O, trotro. Um, those of us who are uh, more, we'll say, more young class and going will say Trotsky. Trotsky to try to give it a, a flair. Trotsky. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Trotsky. 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 So it's one of the easiest and convenient ways to travel within the cities. Trotsky. Yeah, Trotsky. Yeah. Um, you call not it? Like Uber. <laughs> not like Uber, but we have Uber and all that in the country. Yeah. So um, one other thing you should know is um, um, we've already stated drinking water. It will be good to drink water, bottled water which is very, very safe. You um, should avoid drinking uh, tap waters or sachet waters on the streets. For us, our stomach is very um, adjusted to it, so we're good. And then um, please, please, again, um, when it comes to um, what you eat, be very particular about what you eat. Um, I'm, sh I'm sure over the years, Bumani have been able to identify spots and places where have good food and hygienic food, so rest assured that uh, you're going to have good food. and. Ghana has the best food in the world. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it, I love it brother. I love it. <laughs> yes, uh, you should try all the food from jollof rice to banku and tilapia to fufu to um, wache to plantains to red red. You should try all these, and it's 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 very good. Yes, and um, you rest assured that you would enjoy it. And the other thing too is uh, because the size of uh, the group, I don't know, Bumani and I will be coordinating and some of the restaurants take a very long time because, <laughs> because the food is coming right out of the fire. It's not back home, you have fast foods and then it comes straight out. They have to cook it right from the oven and so it takes time. Sometimes you, you will wonder, are they now going to catch the fish from the yes? They actually going to move. If the fridge is, is frozen, they have to um, take it, put it in the water to unfreeze it, and then ah. take the scales out, fry it. So sometimes it takes uh, a while. So please um, have patience, and your food will come. Yes, yes. your food will come. So patience is very, very important. Yes, yeah. And it's not like back in home. Um, you should have an open mind, um, which is very, very important for you to enjoy Ghana. Yeah. Where we are parking is um, um, also a very, very important place. Uh, we just passed a bridge that was over uh, other place, and this bridge is. Um, the, recently, there was a very, very uh, big issue here. These bridges were constructed about 10 years ago, and they are not fully finished completed and so people have to cross the road by hand and so uh, just recently a car knocked down a student a young girl who was oh, crossing the road wow. and so the people here uh, this place called Medina they had to block the road and insist the government start working on the bridge to fix it <laughs> I love the demonstration yes. man. I love it I love so it. there's another one you see that there's a bridge coming up Yes, it's not, it's not, you can see the, the, the place where they have to walk to come up the bridge, it's right. not that. So they are working on it, they have to get it done. Oh yes, definitely need it, because right here is dangerous. Yes, so they have to get it done. So they have to block the road. 
So that's some of the things I think. So for now, a lot of people are, are actually going on demonstration, blocking roads, roads that are not completed. They're supposed to be completed, but not completed. So they're being worked on. Nice. Yes. And so um, today our journey is heading towards um, a brewery. Um, we'll go past a brewery to, I'm sure, to Tutu, where you're going to, to the school yeah. to make the donation. Um, the drive from Accra heading towards a brewery, it takes about 45 minutes to an hour, depending on traffic. And um, a brewery is in the eastern region. Um, we'll be climbing the hill, or the call the Ebri Mountains, or the Ebri Hills. Um, you would see how beautiful the mountain is. Um, it's about 1,200 feet to 1,300 feet above sea level. And one interesting thing about this mountain is it has become a recreational center and an exercise place where on weekends um, people from all walks of life will drive, park their, their vehicles at the foot of the bridge and walk all the way up to the top of the mountain and come back and exercise to keep fit. And so um, you see the sidewalks and all that. And uh, sometimes today you might see some people also exercising and walking. So it's a very, very popular thing um, now here. Yeah. So um, staying healthy is very important. Yes. And so um, when we're going, um, if you have questions, they are very, very welcome. Um, um, I'll, I will try as much as possible to say that um, because our itinerary is structured um, so that the topics that we'll be discussing will be able to center on the days of what we are talking about. Sometimes I've had groups that on the very beginning they want to start talking about the dungeons. No, it's a progressive thing. Yeah, we work on that one. <laughs> okay, so please um, let's go progressively so that each day comes with a story so that by the end of the whole tour you can put the whole thing together and get a whole picture. Okay? Yes, yeah, so I will try as much as possible to, um, to do to, to, to edge you that your questions, you can put them down your questions and as we go along, um, we'll discuss and talk about them. All right? Excellent, we're going to appreciate the nice introduction. Yeah,